We're looking at a practice exercise from page 177 in the textbook, this time dealing with specific heat. So a specific heat tells us how much energy a substance can absorb before it begins to change temperature. Because of this, the units of specific heat are joules, so how much energy it can absorb before changing temperature. In this case, it's in Kelvin. Now, how much stuff we have can either be in grams or moles. When it's in grams, it's a specific heat capacity or a specific heat, and when it's in moles, it's a molar heat capacity. So in this case, we've got a specific heat, which is why it's in joules per gram Kelvin. You could also see it in joules per gram degree C. Remember that the degree size of the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale are exactly the same. Okay, so taking a look at the other information they give us in this problem, they're telling us that we start with 50 kilograms of rocks, but we should notice that the units of our specific heat are joules per gram Kelvin, so we're going to need to convert the kilograms into grams. We've got a similar issue with our temperature. They're giving us the temperature change in Celsius degrees. We need it in Kelvin. Fortunately, those two units are the same size. So the equation we need here is an equation that says that the heat Q is equal to the mass times the heat capacity times the change in the temperature. Q equals mc delta T. Again, remembering that Q is heat. So in this case, the heat is going to be equal to the mass. And we're going to change that into grams, so our units cancel. So 50 kilograms is the same as 50,000 grams. They told us that the specific heat was 0 0.8 two joules per gram Kelvin. And they told us that the temperature increased, so we know that that's going to be a positive, by 12 degrees Celsius, which is the same thing as 12 Kelvins. Okay, so doing this math, we're going to see our units of grams cancel, our units of temperature cancel, and we're going to be left with units of joules, which is exactly what we want. Taking a look at our significant figures, we only have two significant figures in the specific heat, so we're only going to get two in our final answer. So when you see it from your calculator, you're going to round that to four, nine, zero, 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 zero joules. And since that's a pretty large number, it might be better to write that as 4.9 times 10 to the fifth joules. So this is how much heat is absorbed. Okay. Next question, what would the temperature change be if they emitted 450 kilojoules of heat? So similar idea, we're still going to use this equation, Q equals mc delta T, but now they're asking us about the temperature change, so we're going to rearrange this to solve for the change in temperature. So rearranging this equation, we know that delta T is equal to Q over m times C. Again, I'm just going to make sure that all my units work out. So they give me the heat, the heat energy in kilojoules, but I know that that specific heat has units of joules, so I'm going to rewrite that in joules. So instead of 450 kilojoules, I'm going to write 450,000 joules. My mass, I know I want in grams, since it's the same rocks, I'm going to be dealing with the same 50 thousand grams and I've got the same specific heat 0 0.82 joules per gram Kelvin. Again watching my units cancel, the joules will cancel, the grams will cancel leaving me with units of Kelvin which makes sense because I'm looking for a temperature. So doing this math, make sure you only round to two significant figures, you're going to be looking at 11 Kelvin which is the same thing as 11 degrees Celsius because remember that the size of a Kelvin is the same as a Celsius degree. So these are pretty straightforward calculations. You can use that equation, Q equals MC delta T. Just make sure you have everything in the correct unit. So watch very carefully for the unit of the specific heat or the heat capacity, and make sure you're converting all of your other units to match that so your calculations work out.